I don't have to tell you things are bad. Everybody knows things are bad. From the Daily Caller, the D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser says she's worried about America descending into a race war. No. No, 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 no. We have politicians like the mayor of D.C. stoking racial divisions. You look at what's happening in the streets. There are black people and white people and yellow people and red people and purple people on both sides. Very fine people on both sides of this stupid, stupid fight. This is provoking it. And she knows better. She knows that this, this isn't a race war. This is a partisan war. From the Associated Press, we see Trump, Portland mayor, blame each other after deadly shooting. Going back and forth, pointing fingers, Trump and Biden even. Oh, it's his fault. Oh, it's his fault. Oh, he's not condemning the riots. Well, he's not condemning the riots. But you know what? Why do they want a partisan war? Well, from Yahoo.com, Trump and allies seek to turn violence at protests to his advantage. And I thought that maybe Trump was the sucker who fell for the coronaphobia hoax. Who said, oh yeah, oh, I guess the media is right. Uh, they scared the American people enough. We better declare a national state of emergency. And then he tried to kind of weasel out of that trap and slipped on a banana peel named George Floyd. But that's not really what happened, no, because I start... I'm starting to get the feeling that the trump are doing this all deliberately. Sending out their trump loompas in the streets now to meet the protesters. Convoy into Portland that gets somebody shot. Like they didn't know that that was going to happen. And yeah, it's dumb. Now you want to go out, you want to protect people? That's fine. Yeah, there's a threat in your community. Go out, be armed. Protect your community. Protect your neighbors. Protect the businesses in your community. But you want to go out to piss people off? I think it was that guy on the $100 bill who said, those who give up essential liberty for triggered leftists deserve neither liberty nor triggered leftists. What, what, are, what are we talking about here? People just want to piss each other off. Expressions of anger manifest in physical violence from very fine people on both sides. And the leftists that, that, who set Trump up with the coronaphobia hoax, they thought, oh, look, if we just make everything bad before an election, you know, like we normally do to make the incumbents look bad, then we'll get Biden elected as president. And, and Trump is, I mean, he might, I, I think he's slipping just a little bit, but he's still clever. Oh, he's not dumb. No, no, no. Turning the violence at protests to his advantage. Oh, yeah. And it's working. A month ago, people were ready to call this election. Oh, it's going to be Biden for sure. Look, he's up 12 points. He's up 15 points. He's going, going, gone all the way to the White House. Like they said in 16 about Clinton. <clears throat> now, what is this partisan war? Because what, 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 why do I care? Do I care? No, I mean, obviously, I'm supporting the libertarian here. Dr. Joe Jorgensen for president. Why would I support someone from the duopoly? Do I want more of the same? Do I want this partisan war to continue? Because you know what? It's not a partisan war. Except as a front, perhaps. Because what's the real war? Government versus you. Maybe you want to say it's not government. Maybe it's the, maybe it's the people behind it. It's the, it's the real string pullers. Because it's a depression. Everybody's out of work or scared of losing their job. This is where we're at today. 
shopkeepers keep a gun under the counter. Punks are running wild in the street, and there's nobody anywhere who seems to know what to do, and there's no end to it. We know that the air is unfit to breathe and our food is unfit to eat. And we sit still watching our TVs while some local newscaster tells us that today we have we have 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes as if that's the way it's supposed to be. Have we really come to accept this as the new normal? Is this really acceptable? The partisan war, left versus right. We know that there are two parties who are really one party in the United States. They are the ruling American Socialist Party. You can have red-flavored socialism or blue-flavored socialism, but really, those are your only options. Unless you want to break out of this, you want to find the love, you want to vote libertarian, we're going to be on all 50 ballots this year if the government doesn't screw us out of that opportunity as well. Screw the American people out of a real choice. So what is this partisan fight, this distraction? And how are they doing this? From sfgate.com, Trump praises supporters amid deadly clashes with social justice demonstrators. If you've never heard of George Lankoff's book, Don't Think of an Elephant, you should probably check it out, but I can give you the summary here. George Lankoff, <clears throat> super liberal professor, decided to look at a list of conservative political positions, and it occurred to him, this doesn't make any sense. These positions, they just... They're not even related. There's no, there's no continuity. There's no cohesiveness. There's no coherent principle to these positions. Why? Why would they? Why, how can? They? And then he said, "Wait a second. I believe in the opposite of all of these positions myself. Therefore, my discrediting meta-analysis must apply to me too." And what he came to realize from this little thought experiment was that the way we have come to see Republicans and Democrats is the way that we see parents. Father figure, mother figure. And he says, well, for, for a government, we'd rather have a mother than a father. You know, we don't want, we don't want you know, uh, law and order and, and discipline and strict violence. No, we want nurturing and compassion and motherliness. And that's how he justified staying in this ridiculous paradigm, instead of breaking out of this, this mental Chinese finger trap of bipartisanship, of, of looking to government as a parent. Now, what is government? No, it's not mind control to govern the mind. No, no, no. But to govern, to control. When we talk about modern governments, institutions of the state, what does it mean to control? What is it that makes that unique and illegitimate? Is that they are controlling by force, by violence, by coercion? And so the children, right now especially, are emulating the parents. What was the response to the coronaphobia other than a spasm of statism, of violence, of governance. All of a sudden, you were much more controlled than ever. And yes, it's true. There wasn't much violence because you don't need it, right? All you have to do is arrest a few business owners and the rest in that non-essential category will comply rather than face that violence. Or... You'll see the hair salons popping up in people's basements, but don't worry, government will come and violently shut that down too. And so this idea of governance or governing illegitimately in the style of government, of using violence and coercion and the threat of violence to control and manipulate others. 
That is now the crisis we find ourselves in. Instead of us children saying, let's be better than our parents. Let's break the cycle. Let's escape the trauma that they would pass on generation to generation. Let's be loving instead. But I don't know. I'm not really hopeful. The Telegraph headline I see today says, violence and Trump threats are unlikely to deter Portland protesters. And I thought after the Kyle Rittenhouse shooting, people would at least be scared enough to step back and take a deep breath and go, wow, this is really fucking stupid. This is really dumb. We're, we're fighting in the streets to send a message to the rest of the American people. How's that supposed to work? What's the message that we got? Y'all are fucking idiots. And it was pretty clear. We know things are bad. Worse than bad. They're crazy. It's like everything everywhere is going crazy so we don't go out anymore. Partly because we're not allowed to. You see, sick people are quarantined. Prisoners are locked down. If you're not sick, that kind of narrows it down, doesn't it? We sit in the house and slowly the world we are living in is getting smaller and all we say is, please, at least leave us alone in our living rooms. Let me have my toaster and my TV and my steel belted radials and I won't say anything. Just leave us alone. And there's a desperation setting in. The Daily Caller reports today. Minneapolis business owners stunned after discovering insurance won't be enough to cover costs of cleanup after riots. Yeah. Like Lysander Spooner said about the Constitution, it has either authorized our current government or been entirely useless in preventing it. Either way, it is unfit to exist. And perhaps Spooner might have been missing the point that the current constitution authorizing the government that we live under today is totally illegitimate. It's an illegal document. It was the product of a coup against what was then the legitimate government that was by consent, because that's the difference, right? between lovemaking and rape, between a gift and a theft. Consent, consent. They took away the consent of the governed. And for generations, we have just let it run rampant. And so what are they distracting us with now? Well, let's... <laughs> Let's skip ahead one and go. Let's go to the U.S. Sun. Erection night. Yeah. You guys ready for this? Erect Willie to appear on TV for the first time tonight on Channel 4 documentary, Me and My Penis. Yeah. Don't pay attention to what's going on. Never mind the man behind the curtain because an erect... Willie will appear on TV for the first time tonight, breaking one of the final broadcasting taboos. Yeah. Oh, and you can count them. Oh, yeah, right here. First sentence in the story. Edgy Channel 4 documentary, Me and My Penis, contains photos and footage of eight stiffies. Ooh, count them. Eight stiffies. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, but there's a fear-mongering element to this, too. Don't worry. Don't worry. You can still be afraid of the coronavirus. From the U.S. Sun, 
Viral load. Yeah. I didn't even catch the pun at first. Get it? It's a viral load, like shooting your load. Coronavirus can cause men's testicles to swell up and leave them infertile. Oh my god! I, you know what? I I got fucking tired of covering stories like this until I saw this one. Well, there was this one dude who got corona and then fell off a building. So apparently, corona can cause you to fall off a building and die. And we're gonna call that a corona death. And we saw the headline just read like, and everybody's going nuts over this because the CDC finally came out and said, "Look, here's the statistics: only six percent of coronavirus deaths are just corona." 94% of them have some other comorbidity involved as a primary cause of death. And I'm like, why is, you know, Ron Paul covered this. And I'm saying, it's going like, it's, this is, this is, I guess this is the big way everybody now is trying to dispel the bullshit of coronaphobia. But we knew this already. I've been saying this for months now. Oh, but now the CDC admits it. Okay. Now, now you're now it's a thing. Finally, people catching up to this. So this one, what is this? coronavirus can cause men's testicles to swell up and leave them infertile? Experts have claimed because it happened to one dude. One dude. One out of the how how many millions of people have coronavirus? One dude. And you're going to blame Corona. They can't even prove that Corona did this. Medics in the U.S. are warning that COVID-19 could cause the bizarre side effect after treating a previously healthy 37-year-old man. He's, he went to the uh, to the emergency room swelling and discomfort in his scrotum. He had been suffering with some of the main coronavirus symptoms, such as dry cough, fatigue, and fever for 10 days before he went to the hospital. His testicular pain had developed around three days earlier. He tested positive for COVID-19. This is insane. This is literally fucking insane. And then the media. The media, like this is so dangerously irresponsible. Why do you, why do you do this? Why, why, and why do you, the audience, like, I will, will give them any attention? Who is who is still giving any credibility to the mainstream media when they pull shit like this? Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. I want you to get love. I don't want you to protest. I don't want you to riot. I don't want you to write to your congressman because I wouldn't know what to tell you to write. But I know what to do about the depression and the inflation and the Russians and the crime in the street. Howard Beale was wrong in his conclusion. You've got to get loving and say, I'm a human being, God damn it! My life has value. And anger doesn't help that. No. It is a force of violence and division and dehumanization. And they want you to get mad. No, I prefer the John Lennon perspective. The man will do everything to aggravate you, to piss you off, to get you violent. He will flick your face and pull your beard because once he's got you violent, he knows exactly how to handle you. The one thing they don't know how to deal with is humor. And love. And with my apologies to John Lennon and Howard Beale for butchering their quotes, but I think you get the point. So I want you to get up now. I want you to get up out of your chairs. 
okay, you don't have to get up physically. I don't, I don't really care. You can sit there and you can text people on your phone. You can make the calls. But I want you to get up metaphorically off your angry ass. And as Howard Beale would say, go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell and I'm not going to take this anymore. But don't do that. Did anything happen? Did you watch the movie? The network from 1976 with that famous Howard Beale speech? You know what he got for telling people to get mad? He got a TV show. He got an audience. He didn't get real shame. Because it doesn't come from anger. It comes from love. So I want you to get up and talk to somebody, everybody you can, whether it's online, in person, on the phone, text message. And I want you to tell them that you love them. Tell them I am loving as hell and I am not going to let you suffer in your anger anymore. I'm going to do what it takes to love it out of you, to be kind and compassionate and loving. You've got to get love.